And the verse seven, though, well, as I was reading verse seven, I thought I was reading a something else. You know what I even thought? Maybe the writer of this、um, book is has some ADHD, <laughs> so he was writing stuff, and then he just completely. Came out with the things that are not related to the things that he was writing before, <laughs> you know. I was like, "Hey, he, look, look at this!" Like he says, "A quarreling arose between Abraham, Herder, and Lot." And he says, "All of a sudden, the Canaanites and Parasites—I didn't even know how to pronounce it—were also living in the land at that time." Out of the context, like, why would you even say this? We have all this chain of thoughts that are not related to the before, you know. But I realized. It was put there on purpose. It's clear that they were watching the conflict that people were living in there. So Lot and Abraham were having a conflict. They were in an argument: which one is right, which one is wrong, and stuff like that. But Canaanites and Parasites were there, living in that land, watching what they're doing. You know what it makes it sad? Do you think there is a conflict between churches? Do you think churches fight with the churches? Indeed, yes, they do. Do you think the Christians fight with the Christians? Yes, they do. But what makes it sad? That's a sad reality. We were supposed to unite. We were called to unite. But when people outside of the church watches the Christians fighting for their own properties, fighting over for their own Possessions. This is one when the big problem comes. Your reputation for being Christians are dropped dead. Even the unbelievers know. They know how Christians should act. There are the moral values that are engraved in them that tells them this is right or wrong, and, and what Christians should do, Christians should not do. But I think this is the saddest part. Of the whole passage, that the Canaanites and Parasites were watching this conflict, but the great news is how they resolved this conflict.